Good morning. Today we are going to discuss about aggregates and in previous lectures we have discussed about a small uh, and this aggregate is uh, nothing but an agglomeration of solid particles embedded in cement mortar and it forms the skeleton matrix of, for the concrete and it occupies around 60 to 70 percentage of volume. Since it occupies a large volume, this aggregate sources must be uh, should be abundant and it should be also inexpensive since it occupies a large volume and we are using it in many structures it should be cheaply available but nowadays this aggregates that to mainly fine aggregates are not cheaply available and nowadays we are going for an alternative source called emson let it be now we are going to discuss about only the uh, naturally available uh, aggregates okay and another one more thing is it should be inert why it should be inert i'll tell you later okay now going to this aggregates we are going to discuss how this aggregates are being formed natural artificial these are the two main classification and natural we know that aggregates gravels are being formed from rocks rock when subjected to weathering action uh, these aggregates are being formed so the that comes under natural aggregates and artificial aggregates is uh, again which is being formed artificially using some materials like fly ash etc using that material we are about to get we are aiming to get an artificial aggregate and it is termed as artificial aggregates again in this natural aggregate by weathering action if the parent rock gets uh, weathered uh, then it uh, then the naturally formed uh, gravels are obtained if not so what we are doing is we are crushing the natural rock into small sized particles and that is com that comes under crushed aggregates in the natural if it comes through weathering action then we are telling it is based on the now then it comes under the term natural aggregate if not so we are specifying the sizes for the aggregates gravels etc then we are passing the aggregate through crushers and we are obtaining the specific sizes of aggregates this artificial aggregate then we are making up this artificial aggregate is nothing but we are making an aggregate like component using the materials like fly ash and uh, next a new term called recycled aggregate is being used nowadays this recycled aggregate is nothing but when we are demolishing a building after the demolition process we are using the aggregate for again for make building structures that is termed as recycle aggregate and this is the scope of uh, future research in this area recycle aggregate is nothing but the aggregate which is obtained after a demolition of a building so this aggregates are being classified into natural, artificial and recycle aggregates. And natural aggregate are obtained through the weathering action of the parent rock. This uh, again from the parent rock if we specify the sizes and get it into small particles using crushers then it is called crushed aggregate. Artificial aggregate is uh, made artificially by using materials like fly ash. Recycled aggregate is obtained by using the Demo, uh, is obtained after the demolition of uh, structures 
uh, once it is being used in a structure and again we are taking the aggregates and if we use it for another purpose then it comes under the term recycled aggregate. Since the parent rock is getting weathered by actions like uh, erosion, sedimentation, transportation etc. The chemical, mineralogical uh, composition have uh, will be the same as like that of the parent rock from which the particles has been uh, formed that is uh, either the gravels or sand etc will have the mineralogical and chemical composition as same as that of the parent rock but there are some factors which are independent of that of the parent rock what are those factors that is nothing but size, shape, surface, texture, even if it has the same characteristics of that of the parent rock when compared to that of the chemical and mineralogical composition, these size, shape and surface texture plays an important role when these particles which got weathered from the parent rock are used differently. The size, shape and surface have independent roles of that of the when compared to that of the parent rock. And uh, another important term which I told you is the aggregates which is used in concrete should be inert. Why it should be inert? The reason for inertness is since it possesses some chemical composition, mineralogical composition, if it is not going to be an inert material, then the chemical and mineralogical composition which the particle possess will also take part in the hydration reaction. And if it is to be like that then a serious consequences will be faced in the durability criteria that is suppose if a rock if a aggregate possessing a siliceous material is being used in the concrete then that siliceous material react with uh, again uh, water and it forms a gel like substances and that gel like substances when, it, when the concrete gets hardened, this gel-like structures enhances the volume and causes serious issues. And that is the reason why the aggregate should be inert. Next, coming to this size, shape and surface texture. Size. Size. Since the aggregates do not have a specific shape, sizes are expressed in terms of the square sieve opening expressed in terms of square sieve size that is nothing but when an aggregate is being passed through this sieve having a square shape then whether if the aggregate is passing through this sieve then it can be term, termed that aggregate belongs to this size more or less the aggregate belongs to this size likewise since it does not have a specific shape we are expressing the size of the aggregate in terms of a square sieve size analysis is carried out with series of sieves so that conveniently either the percentage passing through the particular sieve size or percentage retained in a particular sieve size can be related to the size of the aggregate. And the aggregate size varies from 75 micron to 150 mm. This is a general variation range which I have given you that is 75 micron to 150 mm but depending upon the purpose where it is going to be used this range gets varied. Next term 
is called as maximum nominal size of aggregates which is nothing but m s a maximum nominal size of aggregate this ma nominal maximum size of aggregate refers to the maximum size through which all majority of the aggregates pass through when being used in a concrete that refers to the nominal maximum size of aggregate and this is the abbreviation of maximum size of aggregate msa it refers that through a particular sieve opening of say 10 mm or 15 mm and through that sieve size all majority of the aggregates will pass through it if the majority of aggregate pass through it then it can be termed that the aggregates belong to this great size, uh, say 10 mm c size opening then the maximum size of aggregates is 10 mm a majority of particles will pass through a particular sieve and that sieve is uh, that size is referred to as the maximum size of aggregate why i am saying this is uh, in the later lectures we will be coming across this term maximum size of aggregates and we will be using this for a concrete design and this sieve analysis is mainly done to determine the percentage of passing or percentage retained in a particular sieve. The sieve analysis is carried out by placing different sieve sizes and by passing the aggregate through these sieves we will be getting either the percentage passing through a particular sieve or the percentage retained on a particular sieve and based on that we can determine the size of the aggregate which we are using. Fine, the term fine and coarse aggregate mainly refers to the relative size through which it being passed. Fine coarse and uh, or natural sand belonging to this fine aggregate will pass through four point seven five mm up to zero point zero seven five mm uh, below that which is termed as silt and clay that we are that we will not use in our concrete and for fine aggregate what is the range is when the aggregate passes through 4.75 to 0.075 mm then it is termed as fine aggregate then obviously coarse aggregates aggregates retained on aggregates retained on 4.75 mm and above or termed as coarse aggregate. The spine and coarse are mainly based on the relative mean size. If it is passing through 4.75 mm up to 0.075 mm then it is termed as uh, fine aggregate. If it is retained on 4.75 mm and above C sizes are termed as coarse aggregates and this is the general range of particles which are we are using in which we will be using in our concrete that is 75 micron to 150 mm. Next comes the shape of the aggregate. Shape it is nothing but the roundness of the aggregate. Since the roundness measures the relative sharpness of the aggregate. Since this roundness measures the relative sharpness of the edges, it denotes the shape of the aggregate. Suppose this is the aggregate. And if I assume it to be a round, then this edge, this edge and this edge represents the sharpness of the aggregate. And this is all about shape and since 
the naturally available materials like river gravels, sands, etc. are being passed through many weathering actions. The more or less naturally available materials like pebbles and sand are being passed through many factors like erosion, sediment, uh, transportation, etc. They will all be round. Whereas the crushed aggregates which I told you already uh, for a specific uh, size we are crushing the parent rock that crushed, uh, crushed aggregates will have an angular shape. If it is a natural aggregate then it will be round in shape and if it is a crushed aggregate it will be angular in shape. And now I have shown you a table describing the different shape of aggregate. First one is rounded that is it will not be having any sharp edges. Example is a river gravel and next is an angular which have uh, which will have a definite edges since it being passed through jaws of crusher. Example is crushed rock and another two is elongated and flaky. Elongated is nothing but the length dimension will be greater than that of the others. The aggregate length dimension will be greater when compared to the other two dimension and flaky the length will be greater than the width and the width will be greater than the thickness. This elongated and flaky plays a major role in a concrete making and it has some certain specifications when being used in concrete and the code restricts the use of this elongated and flaky particles to an extent. A particle is said to be elongated if it is greater than 1.8 mean a particle is said to elongated if it is greater than 1.8 times the mean dia and a particle is said to be flaky when it is less than 0.6 mean dia. A particle is said to be elongated if it is greater than 1.8 times the mean dia and it is flaky if it is less than 0.6 times the mean dia and the general C set which we are using for determining the size of aggregates can't be used here. It contains a different C set, C opening sets and uh, after conducting experiments through those uh, C's we can determine whether the given aggregate is flaky or elongated and uh, based on that experiments we will get terms named elongation index and flakiness index that is the percentage of elongated particles by mass of the aggregate this elongation index is nothing but the percentage of the elongated particles by mass of the particle is termed as elongation index and this flakiness index is again nothing but percentage of flaky particle by mass of the sample is denoted as flakiness index and the code restricts restricts its usage And the code restricts its usage to a limit of and the code restricts its usage to a limit of less than 50 or less than 35 percent beyond which it should not be used in concrete since it causes serious damage to the concrete. Next we are going to discuss about surface texture. Before going to discuss the surface texture, we should be familiar about two terms namely angularity number and sphericity 
factor denoted as phi. Before going into the surface texture, we should know about this angularity number and sphericity factor. What is this angularity number? It is 67 percentage minus solid volume in a vessel filled in a standard manner. This angularity number is 67 percentage minus the solid volume filled in a vessel using a standard procedure. What the 67 percentage refers? It refers to the packing density of sphere particles. Since the sphere that is a per perfectly rounded particles have the highest packing density of 67 percentage that represents to the packing density of sphere particles. That 67 percentage minus the solid volume in a vessel filled in a standard manner. What is that standard manner? It is nothing but take uh, if we take a vessel and fill the aggregates in three layers and after filling it if we did uh, if we find out the solid volume that solid volume is uh, referred to as the solid volume filled in a standard manner this angularity number is this 67 percentage that is the packing density of sphere particles minus the solid volume occupied by the particles which we are taking it did the difference between the that two gives the number termed as angularity number. The 67 is again nothing but it is the packing density when solid uh, spheres are being packed then it occupies a volume of around 67 percentage and it is the highest packing density which is achieved when compared to the other particles minus the solid volume occupied by the other indefinite sizes. This sphericity factor is defined as the specific surface dia to volume dia. The sphericity factor is defined as a ratio between the specific surface dia to the volume dia of a particle which we are taking into account. This angularity number is a reciprocal of this sphericity factor. Angularity number reciprocal to sphericity factor and the values of angularity number the values of angularity number will be 1.1, 1.4 and 1.7 for rounded, crushed and irregular aggregates. And now I am going to show you the different uh, shape of aggregates. Nothing but angular, rounded, flaky, elongated. If it is a flaky and elongated how it will be? Next about the texture. So, if an aggregate is based on the shape, then we have to classify whether it belongs to a rounded aggregate, angular aggregate or a flaky or an elongated aggregate. Next coming to surface texture, that is up to what percentage the surface of the aggregate is being polished or dull since it plays an important role during the interlocking of aggregates that is when the aggregate is used in concrete it has to be embedded in cement paste this texture plays an important role for bonding of aggregates in a cement mortar that is 
the relative uh, percentage to which its surface, its outer surface is being polished or dulled that is termed as surface texture and also the natural aggregates will more or less will be round in shape and that roundness ensures the smoothness of the surface but a crushed aggregate having an angular edges will have a rough surface which en enhances its binding property. So the surface texture is of much importance when we are going to use in concrete and again I am going to show you how this aggregate is being classified based on this texture. The surface texture is based on the hardness, grain size and the porosity of the parent rock how it is being formed whether it is whether it's being cooled rapidly or it's it is allowed to cool down slowly based on that the grains will be formed in a rock and that plays a major role in this texture property and now I am going to show you a table having a different texture property.